Hello and welcome to this video on Pico Diagnostics. This particular video is going to look at how to carry out a very quick and simple compression test using our PicoScope and the Pico Diagnostics software. Now before we take a look how to connect up our hardware and how to run through the software itself, what's important to know at this stage is that with this compression test, like all other forms of compression testing, we must ensure that the engine is not able to start. Now on most modern systems, this can be quite easily achieved just by simply removing either the injector fuse or the fuel pump relay. Now in terms of connecting up our hardware for the test, all the software needs is a very quick and simple connection to the vehicle battery. And if you look at the video in the bottom right hand corner, you can see that I already have my test lead connected and that it's connected to battery positive and to battery ground. So if we take a look at the software now, in order to carry out a compression test, we simply click on the compression test icon which can be found on the left hand side of the screen. This then opens up the compression test application within Pico Diagnostics and all the software needs to know from me now is how many cylinders are on the engine in which I want to test. Now on this particular application it is a four cylinder engine and if you look at the software you can see that as default number four has already been selected for me. So all I need to do now is simply click on the start button which is in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Now once I've clicked on the start, the software carries out a very quick voltage check just to ensure that I am connected to the battery and I'm connected the right way around, but more importantly that it feels there's enough voltage in the battery in order to allow me to carry out the test. The software then asks me to crank the engine. Now just before I go ahead and do that, what's important to know is that in order for the software to give us a very accurate test of what the engine is actually doing in producing compression, we need to ensure that during the cranking stage that the throttle is held wide open, therefore there's no restrictions in allowing the engine to induce as much air as it needs to. So I'm just going to go ahead now and crank the engine. Now you can see I did say it was a four cylinder engine, but I only have three results. Now I've done this on purpose. What I've done is I've actually removed the spark plug from cylinder number one, just to show how accurate the software actually is. You can see I've got three results that are fairly reasonable, and you can see that on cylinder B, I've got no compression. Essentially, that is where I've removed the spark plug from cylinder one. Now, if this was a compression test that we were carrying out in the workshop, and we'd not removed any spark plugs, we may then want to go and do a cylinder leakage test just to see what's going on inside that cylinder and where the evident compression is being lost. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to replace the spark plug into the engine and what we'll do then is we'll carry out the test again and we'll take a look at the results we get then. Right so in order to rerun the test all we need to do is simply click on the start button again Again, the software does a quick voltage check just to ensure it's happy with what I've got and then it asks me to crank the engine again, so let's just do that. Now you can see from the results that I've got four reasonably good readings. Now this engine has done nearly 150,000 miles, so it's going to have a lot of signs of general wear and tear, but if I was running that test in a normal workshop, I'd be fairly happy with that based on the engine that I've got now. Now if you're the owner of a WPS 500, the pressure transducer, what you can actually do is you can carry out an absolute compression test and all you need to do is simply connect up to the battery like we have done now on channel A but by using the pressure transducer and the relevant compression hose you can fit the transducer into one of the cylinders and by connecting that to channel B what you'll actually get is a readout that's either going to be in bar or PSI depending on your preference. Now here's one I did earlier. Now you can see that I've got a pretty good reading there across all the cylinders and you can also see that by looking at cylinder C that that has a P in brackets. That's telling me that that's the cylinder in which the pressure transducer was fitted. Now on the particular engine that this test was run on you can see it was a four cylinder engine. The firing order was 1342 so what we know now is if cylinder C was cylinder 1, we know that D would be cylinder 3, A would be cylinder 4, and B would be cylinder 2. That essentially is how to carry out a very quick and simple compression test with or without the pressure sensor, and I thank you for your time, and I hope this has been of interest and has helped to guide you how to carry out a very quick and simple compression test. 
I thank you for your time. Thank you.